Let's talk a little about yeah. uh, a little more of the political fallout for Joe Biden. So uh, really, in, in recent years, there's been a tradition at the White House of hosting a Ramadan iftar dinner, inviting prominent uh, Muslim Americans uh, to that dinner. Well, this year, that iftar dinner had to be canceled because no one was willing to show up. Let's put this up on the screen. Uh, this says, White House iftar canceled after many Muslims decline invite. And if you read the article, they say that several Muslim Americans declined to go and protest of Joe Biden's support for Israel's war on Gaza. The sources who spoke to Al Jazeera on condition of anonymity, and this reporting is backed up by Washington Post and other outlets as well, said the cancellation on Tuesday came after those Muslim community members warned leaders against attending the White House meal. Quote, the American Muslim community said very early on it would be completely unacceptable for us to break bread with the very same White House that is en enabling the Israeli government to starve and slaughter the Palestinian people in Gaza. Both CNN and NPR had previously reported the White House was preparing a community iftar, so they had planned to do this and had to back out of it when they couldn't get anyone outside of their own staffers to attend. Hours later on Tuesday, the White House announced instead it would be hosting a meal for Muslim government staffers and holding a separate meeting with a few Muslim American community figures. Um, apparently that meeting that was held did not go particularly well based on the reports of those who participated in the meeting. Um, here is one doctor who said, that he was forced to walk out of the meeting because he was uh, so disgusted with the Biden administration. Let's listen to his explanation. You know, we had shown up to this meeting really concerned about what was taking place in the Gaza Strip. And I'm glad that you mentioned that we were, you know, insisting that there not be any food there. It made no sense for us to sort of break bread while talking about a famine taking place. Um, we had shown up and the president and the vice president, the national security advisor are in the room. And it was very brief comments by the president saying he wants to hear from us and he wants to listen to us. And so I spoke first and I let him know that I am from a community that's reeling. We are grieving and we, our heart is broken for what's been taking place over the last six months. And that the rhetoric that has been coming out of the Biden administration, that's been coming out of the White House, it's frustrated a lot of people, especially people who are Palestinian Americans, Muslim Americans, Arab Americans. We are not satisfied with what has taken place. There has been no concrete steps. But keep in mind, we're very concerned about the people that are over in the Gaza Strip that are in Palestine right now, who are not just starving, but are facing the threat of a looming Rafah invasion. And so I was able to share that with the president and let him know that out of respect for my community, out of respect for all of the people who have suffered and who have been killed in the process, I need to walk out of the meeting. And I want to walk out uh, with decision makers and let them know what it feels like uh, for somebody to say something and then walk away from them and not hear them out and not hear their response. Wow. I mean, what did, how did President Biden respond to that? You know, there wasn't a lot of response. He actually said that he understood. And I walked away. So uh, pretty extraordinary for that to be, that interview to be occurring on CNN. Also, um, NBC News had additional reporting of some of the commentary from inside of the meeting. Other indications this did not go particularly well. Another doctor, I can put this up on the screen, who attended, was taken aback when she showed Biden prints of photos of malnourished children and women in Gaza, to which Biden responded, he had seen those images before. The only problem, the doctor said, was that she had printed those photos from her own iPhone. So there was no way he could have seen those photos before, Sagar. Which right. speaks both to the fact that, you know, to him, all the starving Gazans that he'd say, oh, I was all the same. And it also speaks to like an age befuddlement issue as well. So you got a double whammy there. Um, and But I, I think it, just, it speaks to what we were discussing earlier, which is just, you know, to him, Israelis are full human beings that he has full empathy for and Palestinians are not. And, you know, the only reason he's at this height of anger, but still not changing his policy, by the way, right now, is because he has a personal connection to Jose Andres. But all of these images of starving children, children who are be buried under rubble, you know, body parts strewn about a hospital courtyard, none of this is really landing for him. It's not really impacting him, certainly not in the way that the atrocities committing, committed on October 7th did. And there was one other interesting piece of reporting um, that I just saw this morning from this meeting, which is, according to what Joe Biden said inside of this meeting, his own wife has begged him to stop this war, saying, quote, stop it, stop it now. Um, this is from a report in the New York Times, again, per Joe Biden and what he said in this meeting. So interesting that even his own wife 
potentially is um, very distressed by what she is seeing coming out of the Gaza Strip and begging him to put an end to it. And Jill Biden herself has faced, you know, plenty of protesters when she's tried to go out and campaign as well. So, you know, those people who are out there, activists who are forcing Jill Biden, Joe Biden, Corrine Jean-Pierre, all of these officials to have to reckon with what they're doing and what they're enabling every single day, potentially having an impact here on Jill Biden, at least. Yeah, I think it, uh, this is definitely significant. The fact is, is that, I mean, this is part of what is annoying, too. It's like, they're like, it's a Muslim problem. It's not just Muslims, you know, <laughs> that object to this. They, in general, from what we can see, is that I think that he, in particular, has this emotional connection Plus he's stubborn, plus he's old, and it's a media issue where at the end of the day, you know, Biden doesn't even live in reality. He lives in basically like 1990s America. He watches a little bit of cable news, a little bit, and then he reads like hardcover newsprint. That's not how the vast majority of people are experiencing news around this conflict. And I think that when you think, you know, considering that informs the worldview that he brings to this, and it also, I think, probably informs us as to just why he is so steadfast in refusing to change the policy, even if his advisors may tell him different. He's a stubborn old man. He's not going to listen to them. He is I think that's a huge part of it. Completely ideologically yeah. committed to Zionism, period. End of story. Yeah, true. It is, he's willing to risk it all to maintain that commitment. I mean, at this point, I don't think you can really come up with any other explanation because you have so many members of his administration leaking at this point that they're upset with the direction of the policy you've got. He's lost Morning Joe. He lost the Pod Save Bros. He lost Jose Andres. He's losing the UK. Doesn't matter. And, you know, we continue to have significant uncommitted vote. There was a larger uncommitted vote in Wisconsin this week than, you know, the size of his margin against Trump last time around. There was reporting about how Biden himself is seeing the poll numbers is upset about how much of an impact this is having on his reelection prospects. We've t- brought to you so many polls about how the Democratic base is disgusted with this policy, but he apparently mm-hmm. doesn't care. None of it really lands even his own he's even lost his own wife apparently and even that isn't having any sort of a real impact there you go hey guys if you like that video go to breakingpoints.com become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet that's right we're subscriber funded we're building something new we want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations so again to subscribe it's breakingpoints.com